Mm-hmm. Um, yo, what's good, my young kings? Um, I'm gonna give a few more minutes before everyone gets in. If you guys can hear me properly in the chat, put a fire sound emoji. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. So, how's everyone doing tonight? I'm over here with a close friend, um, Fitness Fast. He's also from the DMV, Maryland area. You guys know I used to live in Maryland for a while. So, I want to get a different perspective, um, bring fitness content for you guys, because I always talk about dating, purpose, but I never actually talk about fitness. So it's good to have um, Fitness Fast here. So um, you want to introduce yourself? Oh man, I think we got. I think you froze for a minute. Oh, is that me? Yeah. Hello. Ah, oh, technical difficulties. We're losing. I think you froze for a second. Oh yeah, it was me. Yeah, I think you froze for a second, or it was me, or we froze. All right. Would um. So I was saying, um, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. So my name is Chris, and I go by Fitness Fast right now on Instagram and on YouTube. So I am new to the um, fitness coaching and um, things like that of that nature on social media, but I've been practicing the things that I. I'm preaching for several years, probably since like 2017, 2016, 2017. So I feel like I have a lot to offer and I kind of wanted to bring that to the table today. I know Princeo's audience is mostly like young guys, um, single guys. And so I feel like we can definitely tie in a lot of these things to to relate to each other. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree because fitness is a large part about dating. Like you build up your physique, you're obviously going to have access to better quality women. So like, that's one thing. <laughs> I put up an ad picture on Instagram. <laughs> it changed my life. <laughs> so um, how did you get started with fitness? Like, were you fat at one point? Were you a, the skinny guy or how yeah, did so your journey was, start? So when I was a kid, I was a super skinny kid, like to the point where I was like embarrassed to take my shirt off in public. And like I had really narrow shoulders. Um, I had no chest, like my chest was almost like sunken in. And I, I, it got to a point where I was like, I don't want to be embarrassed of like my body anymore. So yeah, I was doing it um, for myself, but obviously like I was doing it for um, like other reasons too, because like I wanted other people to see me and be like, oh, that guy looks good. You know what I mean? Um, so what I did was like around like towards the end of high school and in college from time to time, um, I would go to the gym super hard, um, eat right, go to the gym like seven days a week and I would bulk up, I would look great, but then it was unsustainable. So I would, I would like plateau and crash and binge and then go right back off into the deep end and I'd get like skinny fat or whatever the case may be. And so I kind of thought, you know, there has to be a better way to do this. So that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm trying to teach guys the easiest possible way to stay in really good shape. And if you look at my Instagram uh, at underscore fitness fast underscore, you can kind of see um, the physique that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like Ronnie Coleman in his prime, you know, getting like super huge. I'm talking about like a Hollywood type of physique, like Steve Rogers esque kind of physique. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like, um, I'm like pulling up your Instagram there. right now. So your shoulders look nice. You got a filled out chest, but you know, you don't need like the biggest legs in the world. You don't need, you know, the most massive boulder lats in the world. And so um, I just kind of wanted to ask you what your philosophy is on going to the gym. Like, what's your fitness philosophy? Because I know that you're also really in shape right now. Yeah, I'm actually about to pull up your Instagram right now. Um, I should pull up the fitness fast one, right? Yeah, because that's my personal one. The fitness fast one has more like obviously fitness related content. Okay. 
Wow, you had a crazy transformation. So that was <laughs> that was actually like a seven month transformation. Like, not even gonna lie, I took that picture on the left in the like around New Year's, and like I was skinny fat. I took a whole bunch of months off because I was um I was being lazy. I was in a relationship with a girl at the time that I we didn't even really like each other. I just wasn't really feeling fulfilled, and so I didn't really have a purpose to lift. And then we broke up, and I kind of thought you know now's my chance to kind of like show myself what i can do and so that's my seven month transformation wow and seven months that's good as that's amazing yeah by by july i had that physique and that was last year yeah you're definitely doing your thing so it's possible it's definitely possible yeah and so i kind of wanted to get into um that was a that's a picture of me from high school Mm -hmm. And then a different picture of me from like 2017 ish, like when I first started getting into fasting. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Wow. <laughs> so, all right. So, make sure to check out Fitness Fats Instagram if you guys have, um, if you guys want to see more fitness content. All right. So, yeah. Um, I want to ask too. So, how do you, or you said, what's my philosophy on fitness? Mm -hmm. Or oh, we can go on that first. So, my philosophy on fitness is, is definitely helpful. So um, I used to be really, really skinny and I end up being able to like get bulk up a little more. I think it's mainly because my metabolism slowed down, but I am cautious about like how much protein I take. So since I weigh like one, 173 right now, I try to get at least 150 gram of protein a day and then keep my fat low. And I don't really count my calories. I just know if I get in protein, I'm gonna get bigger. And then for cutting, I, I, have, I have a fast metabolism, so I naturally kind of get uh, abs. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So um, how was your process of that seven months? Like, okay. So my whole like philosophy as far as fitness goes is first of all, I'm a big advocate for fasting. Are you familiar with mm -hmm. like intermittent fasting? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm a big advocate for intermittent fasting. And you know, there's a lot of other guys doing intermittent fasting right now. Like, One second. Yeah. Can you explain the, um, what intermittent fasting is to the audience? Yeah. So intermittent fasting is basically when you're in a fasted state for um, an intermittent period of time. So fasted state means you're not taking in any calories and intermittent fasting is typically like between 15 hours fasted and like 19 hours fasted. That's a typical like intermittent fasted range. And of course that includes the time that you're asleep and most people will drink, you know, water or sparkling water or black coffee during the fasted window because those things are zero calories. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So, um, we can get into dry fasting too, which is when you cut that out. But as far as intermittent fasting goes, that's like the typically most um, common, commonly accepted um, like explanation or definition is what I'm trying to say. All right. And then finish what you're saying before I cut you off and I have more questions. No, that was it. Go ahead. Okay. So then um, what's the benefit of fasting versus just counting your calories? Yeah. Isn't so it Mm -hmm. Isn't the purpose of fasting just to trick your body into thinking, um, just to, for calories, let me say it again. Isn't the purpose of intermittent fasting just so you're at a calorie deficit, just so, is that, is no like regular purpose or does it actually help your body is my question. Yeah. So that is the number one reason why people do it is because it's harder to eat in a caloric surplus mm -hmm. when you are in a fasted state. And, you know, your body, just to make that make sense to everyone watching in case there's people that are watching that aren't like super fitness minded, um, mm -hmm. your body burns a certain number of calories a day. And if you eat more calories than that, typically you're going to gain weight. And if you eat less calories than that caloric maintenance number, you're going to lose weight, which is why you see on like restaurant menus, like they recommend like 2000 calories a day, which is just like an average recommendation for the average person. Mm -hmm. But fasting has a ton of other added benefits um, other than just helping you stay in a caloric deficit. So <clears throat> it also is, um, it also helps with muscle retention. So like I said before, I used to go to the gym six or seven days a week, which was crazy. And I would burn out. Um, mm -hmm. nowadays I only go to the gym three days a week, exclusively only three? three days a week, mm -hmm. Monday, Wednesday, wow. Friday. And to make it even crazier, I hit PRs almost every single workout I get a new PR. Wow. Yeah. So um, I continue to get stronger, even though 
you know, I am in a fasted state when I'm working out a vast majority of the time. And a lot of people in the fitness industry would say, you know, that's not possible that you can hit PRs while staying in a caloric deficit. Well, what I do is I strategically add in like refeed days. So I mm-hmm. eat in a caloric surplus uh, around like once a week. So that way, um, I have a day where I'm not just in a total deficit because what will happen if you're in a caloric deficit for too many days in a row is your body mm-hmm. will go into starvation mode, right? Mm-hmm. Like your body will completely starve itself because it's going to think like I'm dying. I'm literally not getting enough calories to survive. And then what will happen mm-hmm. is your body will hold on to um, the body fat and actually eat your muscle for, for, for energy. And so that's mm-hmm. not what you want to have happen, obviously. So that's why it's important to eat in a surplus around about once a week. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you do put your body into like the starvation mode, mm-hmm. that's okay. Because what you can do then, since you're not actually starving, right? Like you can go eat something. You just want to eat in a surplus for a couple of days or rather um, eat at a caloric maintenance for a couple of days or a couple of weeks in a row. So that it'll reset your metabolism. So you're not in that catabolic state anymore. Mm. So I have two questions. So for the audience mm-hmm. who don't know what caloric deficit and caloric surplus is, can you explain it to them? Yeah. So kind of what I was saying before, if you like mm. your body has a set number of calories that it burns every day, right? Like if mm-hmm. you were just laying in bed, you would burn, let's just say for the sake of the argument, it's 2000 calories. Mm-hmm. Um, if you eat more than 2000 calories a day, that's a, that's a caloric surplus and you will gain mm-hmm. weight most likely unless you have something weird going on. Mm-hmm. Now, if you eat less than that every day on a consistent basis, you will most likely lose weight. Mm-hmm. So that would put you in a caloric deficit. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then question two. So in the fitness community, when I, even when I Google stuff, I was going to know how to gain, uh, was it? gain muscle and lose weight at the same time. So if you're in a, if you're, it sounds like you're in a um, caloric deficit for majority of the week, and then you have a few days at caloric surplus. So how are you still building muscle? And then it's interesting. You said three days a week too. Mm-hmm. So how are you still building muscle? So it's, it's because of the major health benefits that fasting has. Like I said, mm-hmm. fasting helps with muscle retention. So when you're mm-hmm. in a fasted state, what your body thinks is happening is your body's like, oh, he is working towards getting his next meal. So we need to hold on to this muscle mass and actually make the muscle mass stronger and thicker so that he can work harder to get his next meal. So that's what your body's thinking. It's almost like tricking your body into keeping the muscle mass. And the way that it works, like think about ancient humans, right? Mm -hmm. Ancient humans, like our ancestors from like, 3,000, 4,000 years ago, were they waking up in the morning and eating Lucky Charms? <laughs> no. Hell no, man. Like they would wake up <laughs> in the morning, they would be fasted, and they would go out and hunt, do extremely physical activity in a fasted state to get their next meal. And they would kill like, let's say a, a buffalo, just for example, mm. let's say they killed a buffalo. Um, would they have like a refrigerator to keep their meats in? Mm. Definitely not. So they would have to cook all that up, eat it. They would eat a huge meal. And then they would fast until their next meal. And then when you see like drawings of like ancient humans, what do they look like? They look extremely lean, ripped. right? They yeah. look chiseled. They look great. Like as far as like having nice shoulders. Now those are just drawings, obviously, but like they have um, like factually historical um, evidence. Mm-hmm. All right. That makes sense. And then for guys in the chat, right? I see you guys are asking dating questions. Um, fitness fast is actually focusing on um, fitness right now. He also is familiar with dating content, but right now are the interviews for fitness. So if you guys have any fitness question, put them in the chat, okay? And we're going to answer this eventually, okay? And so um, then my next question is, right? So um, if, let's say if I'm in a fasted state, does it really matter about the fats and what I eat then? Or how how does that work out? So... I mean, so for me and for Mm -hmm. what I'm telling people, the reason why I'm fitness fast on Mm -hmm. Instagram and on YouTube is because I want I want to make fitness as easy as possible for everyone, because I've noticed that a lot of like fitness gurus and people like that will make it very complicated telling you, oh, you need to eat out of Tupperware six times a day and you need to go to the gym six days a week and you need to eat these meals with these weird supplements and these weird uh, spices that you've never heard of before. And that's simply not the case. Like. 
I can eat like pizza and donuts whenever I want within reason and still stay lean and gain muscle and, and lose fat. Now I say within reason, because obviously I'm not going to go out and eat pizza and ice cream every single day. Like, let's not be ridiculous. I would get mm -hmm. sick or worse. Um, but you know, like I said, within reason, you can still eat your favorite foods whenever you want, when you're not in the fasted state. Now, when you are, um, eating, what happens is your body uses the macronutrients for fuel and macronutrients mm -hmm. are carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. And your body uses them for fuel in that order. So let's say you eat a well-balanced meal, right? Your body will take the carbohydrates for energy first, right? And mm -hmm. then it will take the fats for energy if there's no more carbohydrates. And then if there's no fats or carbohydrates, it will use protein for energy, but only if it has to, because it wants to keep that protein so that you're so that you don't lose your muscle mass because it your body knows that you need that to survive. So when you are in a fasted state, there's obviously no carbohydrates for your body to eat, right? Because you're fasted. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no fats either, right? In theory, because you haven't eaten mm -hmm. anything. But what fats does your body still have? Your Damn body it. fat. Yeah. Your, your body oh. fat. Hmm. Okay, so you're, that you're, yeah. So your body. Yeah. Okay. So your body will use the body fat for energy as long as there's still body fat. And as long as you don't put your body in a catabolic state by staying in a deficit for too many days or weeks or months in a row, it's different for everyone. And you'll know what that is for you, because obviously if you plateau and you notice, oh crap, I'm not losing fat anymore and I'm not getting stronger in the gym anymore, then you'll know, oh crap, I put my body into a catabolic state. My body's in starvation mode. But it's nothing to panic about because, like I said, just eating a surplus for a couple of days or eat a maintenance for a couple of days or weeks and your your body will fix itself. Okay. And then um, you already explained this question already, but for everyone who's new, um, can you explain one more time? And I want to add on to this. What, what are your time periods for fasting too? So for intermittent fasting, which is what I do for probably about six to nine months of the year. I'll mm -hmm. stay in a fasted state for around 16, 17, 18 hours a day. So I'll eat dinner around like, let's just say 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then I will eat lunch around like 2 o'clock, like 1 or 2 o'clock. I'm guessing that comes out to like 17 hours-ish. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do the quick math right now, but y'all guys get what I'm saying. Now, mm -hmm. what I'm advocating for and what makes me different from a lot of other um fitness coaches is i actively am talking about how you can prolong your fast so everybody's talking about it men fasting now but i'm mm -hmm. one of the only people talking to, well i shouldn't say i'm one of the only people but i am an active voice for talking about prolonged fasting so sometimes like in the summer times i'll do 23 hour fasts every day so i'll just eat one massive meal like the omad diet the one meal a day diet I'll do that and just eat one massive meal, totally satiating, fills me up, tastes great. Foods that I love, foods that are healthy, obviously, too. Um, but it doesn't have to be healthy every time. Like if I go out for drinks on the weekend and have a whole bunch of cheeseburgers, like it's really not going to change my physique unless that's something that I'm doing like every single day. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then by staying in that fasted state for a longer period of time, it adds to the benefits of intermittent fasting. You get anti-aging benefits, you get more muscle retention benefits, um, and, and the list goes on and on, and I'm actually going to make another video talking about the benefits of, of fasting for extended periods of time, but I'm basically getting those benefits that ancient humans were getting when mm. they were eating one massive meal a day and then fasting for the rest of the day. Did you say what time you wake up? What time do you wake up and start eating? I heard 2 p.m. for lunch and then 7 p.m. is when you stop. Yeah. So what time you wake up isn't really super important. Some people will say like, oh, um, I want to <clears throat> push my fast four hours after I wake up mm -hmm. or six hours after I wake up. And you can mm -hmm. do it like that if you want to. But for me personally, it's easier to take it as the total amount of time fasted because then you can include the time when you're asleep in your fasted window. And that's also like a psyche thing, too, because it makes you mm -hmm. think like, man, I'm doing a really good job. I fasted for 18 hours. But you don't have to tell yourself like, yeah, eight hours of those, I was asleep. You see what I mean? Oh, uh, okay. I see what you're saying. So are you saying your first meal is at two and then your last meal is at seven and then the rest of that is your fasted state? That's what you're mm -hmm. talking 
Yeah, and sometimes oh, okay. I'll even yeah, sometimes I'll even eat a snack wow. in between um, if I'm feeling it. You know, no, that's but dedication. When I'm doing, like, one meal a day, I'll fast uh-huh. for the whole day until like seven or eight p.m. Like mm-hmm. right now, right now I'm about uh, yeah. The last time I ate was at eight yesterday. Wow. So right now uh-huh. I'm about twenty three and a half hours fasted. Okay, that's dedication. Um, but you get used I, to it, man. It's not even hard. Like it's yeah. like I don't even see it as dedication anymore because it was tough at first. Mm-hmm. But then once you get used to it, your body realizes like, oh, this is how it's meant to function. Like I don't know mm-hmm. if you're religious at all, but in every major religious text, like Muslims, Christians, Jews, they mm-hmm. all believe in fasting. And I believe yeah. there's a reason for that. I believe that that's it's because that's the way that God intended for us to eat. Yeah, my I'm Christian, so we do um three day well. For my church, we do three day fast at the end of the month. And then January, we do like a Daniel fast where we only eat fruits for like a certain time period. Yeah. Cool. I'm a, I'm a Christian too. I always wanted to try the Daniel fast, but I never got into it. I would feel like, I, I don't know. I've always been, because um, I work out a lot. So I've always been told protein, 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 protein is all that matters. So I can only imagine, like, I can't think of a fruit that you get a significant protein from though. No, um, I mean, you can get a very small amount of protein from like orange juice and stuff like that, but like um, the sugar, though, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend that anyone do the Daniel fast as a lifestyle. Like, I'm talking mm-hmm. about doing fasting as a lifestyle, like, you can do this mm-hmm. every single day for the rest of your life, but mm-hmm. with the Daniel fast, I don't think that's something that's meant to be done for a very long period of time, like forever. Because even yeah. Daniel himself, he only did that for like a set period of time, and he knew that yeah. it was only going to be for a set period of time. That's interesting though. And then I'm, I might, now that I have this interview, I might try intermittent fasting. So um, when I was cutting, I went to Puerto Rico a few months ago to mm-hmm. take, and I, I was cutting when I was, that's the leanest I have on my Instagram picture, right? So what I was doing, I was just focused on getting what, 2,800 calories a day. And then um, I was focusing on cutting down my fat. So I stopped eating regular bacon and got turkey bacon. Mm-hmm. I stopped eating regular eggs and got um, egg whites. And then I was counting, like, I was eating, all, I stopped eating chicken thighs. I was eating tilapia instead because I was low fat. And right. I was trying to, and I was eating, like, two protein shakes a day. And right. there's, like, um in Maryland, there's a place called, like, Five Star Fitness. So I was going there, yeah. like, pretty much, yeah, every single day to check my body fat. It was dropping and my muscle mass. So that's what I was doing. But this intermediate fasting sounds promising. Yeah, see, I respect you for doing that. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of other people do fitness like that too. And if you love mm-hmm. doing that, if you love doing mm-hmm. doing it like that, that's totally fine. More power to you. But mm-hmm. to me, that sounds like you're being a slave to your fitness. And I genuinely don't believe that's the way that God intended for us to live, for us to just mm-hmm. be slaves to our fitness. Like I've made it so easy for myself. I only really think about fitness when I'm at the gym and I only mm-hmm. spend about, uh, three and a half to four and a half hours at the gym a week because I only go three days a week and each of my workouts are only like 60 to 90 minutes. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's a, this question is related to that. Cause I, even I had that question. So I try to go four times a week. I do um, one upper body, one leg, one full day push and one full day pull. Right. So mm-hmm. um, I know most people who are like really gym rats, they do like six day push, pull, yeah. push, pull. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm curious, like, um, What's the pros and cons of working out six days a week, training every muscle two times a week? So there are so many, there are so many cons that I can personally think of because I've done it before Mm -hmm. to working out six days a week. A, you have to eat all the time. And I know some people will hear that and be like, oh boy, I get to eat more. But no, dude, like you have to meal prep your meals in Tupperware, eat out of Tupperware like six times a day, chicken, breast and broccoli all the time, Mm -hmm. which gets old. Trust me. I like chicken breast and broccoli too, but not every day. Um, you have to continually fuel your body because you're ex- you're you're exercising, literally exercising your body so much that if you if you were to be in a caloric deficit for as much as I am, you would definitely get sick because of the stress on your on your um, central nervous system and parasympathetic uh, nervous system is I think the word that I'm trying to use. So that to me again not to beat a dead horse, but it really sounds like being a slave to your fitness. The only way I could justify going to the gym like six days a week and eating all that extra food, hey, you're going to spend more money doing that and you're going to waste more time doing that. But Mm -hmm. the only way I could really justify that is if you are someone that is like big into powerlifting or you're like big Mm -hmm. into bodybuilding and you really Mm -hmm. just want to get like huge, you want to like, you want to look like Thor from the Marvel movies. Um, 
like you want your biceps to look like people's legs. Like if, if that's what you're trying to do, then that's what you need to do. Like I can't look like that going to the gym three days a week. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what I can do is I can look like, um, you know, uh, super saiyan God, Goku, um, or, or Steve Rogers after, um, the, the medicine from the first, uh, Marvel movie, you know what I mean? By only going to the gym three days a week, <clears throat> mm -hmm. I may not be huge, but to put this into a dating perspective, like I know a lot of guys here are interested in a lot of girls really don't like that guys. And you're going to have to take mm. my word for it. Like if you put a picture of, of me or Prince O here shirtless next mm -hmm. to a picture of like Ronnie Coleman in his prime or Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime, most girls are going to be like, yeah, I don't really like all that muscle. He kind of looks like a freak kind of looks like the incredible mm -hmm. Hulk. Um, and don't get me wrong. There are girls that, that do like guys that are huge like that and have tree trunks for legs, but mm -hmm. speaking of tree trunks for legs, like that's not even functional. Like you, like you're going to chafe in between your legs, having massive legs like that. Like I'm all about having an aesthetic body that is pleasing to look at. And that is functional. My body right mm -hmm. now is functional. I have a ton of energy all the time. You know, it's a really great feeling to like wake up in the morning and be able to jump out of bed. Um, because I'm never tired. I have all this energy and I credit that to not only my eating schedule, which is more of a lifestyle. I don't even like to call it a diet. It's more of a lifestyle mm -hmm. because it's the way that I live and I've grown to enjoy it, which is what I'm trying to tell guys to do. Like you can enjoy this and then you won't think of it as a diet anymore, but mm -hmm. not only my lifestyle, the way that I eat, but also my exercising too, because if I went to the gym six days a week, I really think that I would plateau. I would start to resent it. And then I would just quit. Like I would binge and quit, which is what I've done mm -hmm. before. So that's why I know that that isn't really sustainable for an extended, like a very long period of time. Okay. That makes sense. So basically what he's saying is like, you have to make it into a lifestyle that is something sustainable, like going six days a week. You can't go six days a week for the rest of your life, but doing three yeah. days unless and doing intermittent fasting. Love it. Like unless you're yeah. a gym rat, in which case more power to you, like I said, yeah. but for the average That's person what... like us who have other things that we're working on in life, like we have businesses that we're working on, we have relationships, mm -hmm. we have all kinds of other things that we're doing six days a week and, and eating out of Tupperware five times times of the day it's just not realistic mm -hmm. yeah my brother my brother used to be a bodybuilder he was huge like he was big and then i remember one day he just texted me like this is not sustainable he was going like six days a week some days he was going like two days a week and the next thing you know he just he just yeah. stopped he lost like 50 pounds but he still he still looks good though and it, it's actually interesting that you said one thing like how girls don't really like guys that like the hawk um i think at one point they said um who uh, Michael B. Jordan was one of the most attractive guys in the world, right? And he's not even like built like the Hawk. He's more built like a, not a, I want to say a swimmer, but he's just a little bit bigger than a swimmer. Yeah, look at his physique in the um, Black Panther movie. That's one of my favorite mm -hmm. movies that he's in. And he has mm -hmm. really narrow waist. He's got a nice chest and big shoulders. And that mm -hmm. physique is like, I would say probably the most attractive physique to women um, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a V shape. It's a mm -hmm. V shape. And I, I feel like that's how men are supposed to look like if you have these absolutely massive legs, like it's just not natural. Like it doesn't look quite right. And I know like to us, like we might see that and be like, man, that looks awesome. Like, like props to that guy for having those massive legs and those huge quads. Like I've definitely seen guys like that and been like, yeah, mad respect. But I personally don't want to put in the hours and the stress of doing all that. And for what? Because I don't even feel like that looks good. Like, I don't think that would be a good look for me. Yeah, and it's a lot of work. Hey, guys, so the equivalent of a V look for a guy is like the equivalent for a girl having the hourglass figure. You guys know the nice uh, nice top, waist, and then big old thing. So, yeah, girl. basically what we're trying to say is girls prefer a slimmer look that's muscular like a V versus like the Rock Johnson, who is just hella huge. So um, Yeah, exactly. So RPM asks, can you get good muscles with home workout? Man, you're gonna have to answer this because during quarantine, when we had the home workouts, I, I just stopped working out. <laughs> oh no. You know, I just, so... I, I ended up buying a home gym, right? Mm -hmm. I ended up buying a whole gym, but it was expensive at that time because like oh, everyone yeah. was buying equipment. Yeah, I ended up spending a lot of money, but I couldn't do the home workouts, they were boring. Yeah, so I don't wanna give away all my secrets here. I don't wanna give away any uh, free workout programs here. 
Yeah. But, I well, let me say one thing. If you guys want more details and want to contact him, contact him at Fitness Fat Fast. That's his IG right there. Um also if you could change your name on here to like IG Fitness Fast so they can find you. It's in this title, but if you could change your name too, that would be helpful. But um yeah, how do I do that? Uh I don't think it's gonna let me. Okay, I'm I'm gonna say it myself. So um Okay. What what advice do you have to give for um home for home fitness? Yeah, so I'll answer that while you're working on the the title. Um, anyway, and it's it's at underscore fitness fast underscore. So, okay. uh, and that's for IG, and then I have my YouTube linked in my bio to my IG. But anyway, as far yeah. as home workouts go, you can get in good home workouts, but I'm telling you, dude, like it would be so much better to go to the gym and actually use like do weighted exercise with like dumbbells or barbells and things like that. Excuse me. Because at home, like during quarantine, I was still exercising. I had one 40 pound dumbbell and two 20 pound dumbbells. And that was it. And I was able to still work out three days a week in my living room. And then after quarantine was over and I could go back to gold's gym, I actually went back and immediately hit a PR on weighted dips, which I hadn't done in like six months or whatever the time frame was. So I was doing home workouts, but I at one point stopped making strength gains. Like I stopped getting bigger because I only had one 40 pound dumbbell and two 20 pound dumbbells. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I can only go up in reps so much because once you're, going above like 15 repetitions for an exercise you're no longer really doing it for for gaining like muscle size you're doing it more for like endurance which is healthy for you for sure but you're not going to really gain muscle size by going for like 30 reps or 40 reps for like mm -hmm. a, a shoulder press or or like sit-ups for example so can you get in shape doing home workouts yes absolutely but is it something where you're going to continue to look better and better every single time? Like eventually, no, you're going to plateau unless like Prince O said, um, you get your own home gym with like the adjustable dumbbells and like your own squat rack. You can do that, but that's going to be like several hundred dollars. Like those adjustable dumbbells, if you get like the $90 ones, bro, like those are like $300 each. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at those. I was definitely looking at those adjustable ones. And then by yeah. and during quarantine, you couldn't even get them because I was looking everywhere for them. Yeah, all yeah. sold out. I saw that. Yeah, I was trying. And then I have a question Um, because RPM has been asking about home workouts. So I'm assuming maybe he's a younger guy who doesn't have access to gym, like probably someone who's still in high school. Um, yeah. So the thing is, too, like back in the day, like um, most schools, like they have gyms. Like you can take out – when I was in school, I could take a, like a workout class, weightlifting class, weight training so that was a way to do that too. And then um, even if you get a job at a gym, then you have access to gym if you can't if you can't afford a gym. Um, those are the those are my best opinions to do if you're really serious about working out. And then sometimes like some certain apartment complex, if you have friends that live in an apartment complex, you can contact them to go to to their gym or something like that. So there's there's always ways to um, work out and go to a gym. You just have to sometimes you got to throw a little finesse. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've done that too. I've definitely worked out at like apartment um, gyms, but those typically aren't the best because I mean, you're really limited with what you can do there because they only have mm. so much equipment. Um, but you can, you can definitely use those if you're desperate. Now for me personally, like I remember when I was in high school and I had never been to a gym before, I was definitely intimidated to go by myself. And luckily I had some friends when I first started lifting in like 2010 Mm -hmm. when i was like a sophomore or a junior in high school <clears throat> luckily i had some friends to go with but nowadays i just go by myself and mm -hmm. i can tell you guys like if you're nervous about going to the gym by yourself you've never been before um don't be i know it's like easy for you to say but like don't be nervous to go to the gym by yourself mm -hmm. because the vast majority of lifters in there know what it's like to go into the gym alone and out of shape like they they respect that like when i see people that are like overweight and out of shape or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be and i see them in the gym like i have nothing but respect for them um mm -hmm. because they're obviously trying to do something about the fact that they're overweight or out of shape or whatever the case may be so if there is anyone at the gym that says something to you like rude or it has any has ever said anything to you rude at the gym like i've had that happened to me before too where people have said something smart to me 
at the gym trying to like alpha me or whatever. Just know that those are people that have so much problems themselves that they try to put other people down to make themselves feel better. So, mm -hmm. and, and that's not just at the gym. You'll get people like that anywhere in any walk. You'll get people like that at the bar when you're trying to pick up girls, yeah. at, the gym, at work, anywhere. So you can't avoid yeah. that. So you just nah, have to learn how to, to, to roll with it. And most of the time people in gym, honestly do not care. They are most of the time they're in their music. They just jamming yeah. and doing their own thing. They're huffing and puffing. And then I got a funny story actually. So, when I was like, what, 14 or something, it was the first time I ever went to the gym, right? I thought the bar was going to be light. So I just put on 25s and then I put on another 25 and I lifted up that it went came right down and people had to come help me. I was like, oh my God, it was that was heavy. And then I had to start with just benching the bar. I was struggling getting six. I remember those days like it was yesterday yeah. and no one even laughed. They just, they were supportive. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And like I said, if there are people there that make fun of you, cause like, let's say you're working at a high school gym, like high school kids can be cruel because they're still like learning who they are. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but just know that that's not a reflection on you. That's a reflection on them. Mm -hmm. So, and, and besides, if you are working out at a high school gym, bro, like ask your, like whoever's in charge of the gym, like if there's like a weight trainer there, or if there is a like phys ed teacher there um, that runs that gym, I mean, there, there has to be right. Like legally there mm -hmm. has to be someone there that runs the gym literally just ask them for advice and if they're a teacher or if they're someone that works with kids like they're going to be happy to help you and that's free advice like you can take that advice for free like right now prince o and i are on here giving out free advice on youtube online but like you can have access to someone in the gym that you can ask for advice for free and then that's someone that you can like talk to face to face because for me and prince o we're going to end this live video eventually you know whether it's in five minutes 10 minutes 30 minutes whatever you can go to talk to somebody face to face and then that conversation is not over until you walk away. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's facts. And then also, um, since most of my channels are about dating advice, has fitness affect your dating life at all? I've actually heard that like from really like fit guys that the only people who even compliment you are guys and women. They're just like, oh, okay, yeah, but they don't truly really care. How do you, how do you think of, what do you think about it? Has it improved your dating life? Has it anything? Yeah. So as you know, um, I would say most men are attracted to women just based on how they look like a lot of mm -hmm. men. I would say like 80 percent of men can look at a woman and, and be like, oh, she's hot. Um, and even if she's like dumb as a doorknob, you know, no offense, um, they would still be like, oh, yeah, I really like that girl. But for girls, you know, they're not attracted to guys just based on how guys look. Some girls are, but girls are attracted to guys based on looks and also um, if you got a good job and also if you, you know, have a lot of friends, there's a lot of things that go into female attraction towards guys. So do looks matter for, for girls? Absolutely. They do like a hundred percent. I know that you see like on TikTok and stuff, a lot of girls, like little, little girls, like high school girls talking about like, Oh yeah, I want a guy with a dad bod. Like, no, you don't like, that's a joke. No, they don't. Obviously. Yeah. And obviously no, they don't. Um, and, and they might have a guy with a dad bod and that's why they're saying that because they're trying to like mm -hmm. justify it to themselves. But as far as good looks go, um, and like having a nice body goes, it only really helps you to get your foot in the door. Like mm -hmm. Prince o is absolutely right that most of the compliments that you get when you have a nice body, most of those compliments come from guys because guys mm -hmm. know, you know, how much work it takes to, to get a body like that. And girls know too, but obviously girls don't have a guy's body, so they can only relate so much. Mm -hmm. Now, like I said, Good looks can only really help to get your your foot in the door, but it does help to get your foot in the door. What you need next is you need to be able to actually talk to girls, which, again, subscribe to Prince O's channel here. So hopefully, you know how to do that. <laughs> hopefully, you guys know how to do that. You guys better know how to do that. I've been putting out content for like two years about that. <laughs> and then, yeah, even in my day in life, real, realistically, like having a body, it, it helps. But it only really helps on dating apps to get the first impression. They'll like you. And you guys know with dating apps, is it's more than them just liking you. You still have to conversate with them. You still have to meet up with them in person. You still have to do all that stuff. But at the end of the day, just getting a nice physique is going to help you in the long run. It's just going to yeah. make you feel more healthy. And it's it's many accomplishment. Like I PR today on deadlift. I was, I was hyped. <laughs> Yeah. And it's, it's going to help you with confidence too, guys. So like, even if you're in the club, like, let's say you are going out and you're trying to talk to girls, let's say you're in the club and you got on like a long sleeve shirt and, and khakis on, even mm -hmm. though, even though no one can see you shirtless, 
you are going to know like subconsciously I look good and that's going to make you feel good. And it's going to make you more confident to talk to, to, to people in there. Even if you're just going in trying to make friends, like it's just going to make you more confident to talk to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I completely agree with that. Um, yeah. And then what do you think some, we might've um, gone over this before, but what do you think some of the biggest myths are in the fitness communities? So, um, the, the biggest one is kind of the one that I already said is that you need to go to the gym, you know, five, six, seven days a week. You need to eat out of Tupperware six times a day and or whatever the case may be. You know, I don't want any haters in the comments saying I've never heard anyone say that you need to eat out of Tupperware six times a day. Like, I don't need to deal with that. I'm just, you know, being facetious. You get what I'm trying to say now. Um, I do feel for the fitness industry, though because I don't think that it's most of the fitness influencers fault. I think that a lot of this like garbage that's placed on us comes from the food industry. And what does the food industry care about? They don't care about yeah. your health and fitness. They care about you eating more food. So they come yeah. out with fake science to get you to eat more meals in a day. That's where all this three balanced meals a day comes from, which is BS. Like you don't need three meals a day to be healthy. It's not true. And nowadays I think I saw something recently where someone in the food industry or, or something was saying you need to eat four balanced meals a day. It's not true. It's flat out not true. And it's lies that are told to us by the food industry to try to get us to eat more food. Because when you walk down the, the grocery store aisle, what do you see? You see a whole bunch of crap. Like, especially if you're walking down like breakfast cereals or breakfast foods, you see like waffles and pancakes and pop tarts and, and like cereal and like almost all cereal is garbage. Almost every cereal. I recently mm. saw Jolly Ranchers cereal. You really need oh. to tell me that you want to wake up in the morning and that's the first thing that you're going to put in your body and you're going to be like, yum, most important Jolly Rancher cereal. Like get the heck out of here. No chance. But it's all lies that's told to us by the food industry. And I honestly think that the food industry is starting to get cocky. They're starting to get cocky with it. They're like, we can feed you guys whatever we want. Jolly Rancher cereal and you guys will eat it up. You guys will think that it's healthy because breakfast is the most important meal of the day. That's crap. I haven't eaten breakfast in like six months. Mm -hmm. And I'm like the healthiest that I've ever been. Wow, he's at six months. It's funny though. Jolly Rancher, um, Jolly Rancher cereal. I'm not gonna lie, it sounds fire. That's one of my favorite candies. <laughs> I might wake up and I mean, eat that. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I probably, I probably would eat it just to try it because. Yeah. And the the best part about fasting is that it's a lifestyle. And so if you like, let's say I want to go out in Fed Hill, right? You're you're hip mm -hmm. to Baltimore. Let's yeah. say I want to go out in South Baltimore for brunch and I want to have some mimosas and an early lunch or a late breakfast with friends. Like I can do that. That's not going to impact my fitness. Now, if I mm -hmm. do it every single day for weeks or months, yes, that's going to impact my fitness, but it's not going to in the short term. Like if I just do it once a week or once every other week, because my lifestyle is still the same. I'm still committed to fasting as a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, guys that's... Get that? I hope everybody in the chat gets that. Yo, have you guys got that? Um, put a one in the chat. And then one more thing on the cereal too, right? I had some oh. Sour Patch cereal. Man, it was disgusting. <laughs> oh, that sounds <laughs> awful. Yeah, yeah, it was disgusting. Um, that's on fast and liquid. Yeah, so, so um is that is that dry is that what you called? What's what you, what was dry fast again? Is yeah, that so, is that the same thing? So I'll get into that right now. So a lot of people are like that's a really split um thing in the fitness community in the fasting community like a lot of people really butt heads on dry fasting versus water fasting and so you can drink water during your fast um i do typically most of the time um and it'll help to, to flush out your system but listen if you drink too much water during your fast the water has nothing to latch on to and it'll just run out of your system and that's why your pee turns clear and if that happens you're flushing out all the electrolytes of your system and you can get really sick from doing that. So definitely take it easy on drinking water when you're fasted. Now you can drink like sparkling water or black coffee during your fast too, but take it easy with that as well. Because like I've seen some conflicting research with um, coffee during a fast. Some people say it's healthy. Some people say it's not. And I'm not like an expert on your gut microbiome or anything like that. So if you are going to do that for like hunger, like appetite suppressing, that's fine. But 
it's not something that you should have to rely on because there is caffeine in coffee and that is a drug and you don't want to have to like develop a um, like need to, to do that. Now, getting into dry fasting, I have a whole video on this on my YouTube channel called Is Dry Fasting Healthy? And you should definitely watch that. It's a 16 minute video. I just kind of go off on like everything I know about dry fasting. So basically, when you're dry fasting, um, what happens is I wouldn't I wouldn't even recommend dry fasting unless you're going to prolong fast like you're going to fast for upwards of at least 23 hours between like 23 hours and, and like 72 hours, um, which I've done before. I've done a 72 hour dry fast before, um, which is funny because if you Google how long the human body can survive without water, it's going to tell you three days, which is BS. And I would know from experience because I did that, you know. Um, but anyway, what why dry fasting is healthy and what it can do is basically when you are in your dry fasted state, your body still needs water, right? Because your, your body is like 72% water or something like that. So what happens is your body takes the water from your fat stores because there's water in your body fat. So it accelerates your rate of fat loss. Do y'all guys get that? So you guys get it. Put a one in the chat. Yeah. So basically when you are dry fasting, your fat loss rate is extremely much faster. Now, some people will do what I call death fasting, and I didn't make that up. Um, I've seen that on other like YouTubers pages. Death fasting is when you like sit in the sauna or sit out in the sun when you're dry fasted and like you don't even wash your hands, don't even take a shower, have like zero water exposure at all. And that's called death fasting. And that can really, really speed up the rate of fat loss. Now, when you're doing this, obviously you need to be careful um, because you can put your body into starvation mode a lot faster. So it's important to have those refeed days again, where you eat at caloric maintenance. You might not want to do like a 72 hour dry fast. And then the next day eat in a caloric surplus because it's going from one extreme to the other and it could throw your body out of whack and you could get really sick from that. Now, um, that being said, I think dry fasting is a great tool. Um, but I don't do it that often cause I just simply don't have to, because I'm already super lean. You see what I mean? Wow. So is, is dry fasting a great tool? Yes, absolutely. But you need to make sure that you stay in control because I know a lot of doctors that say, oh yeah, I would never recommend fasting and especially not dry fasting to my patients because of the big um, um, like frenzy about people that have like eating disorders, like anorexia and bulimia and stuff like that. And that is very important to touch on those points because you know if you have a problem like that maybe fasting is not for you you feel me mm -hmm. but um the the biggest point that i can say as far as that goes is as long as you maintain control you do not have an eating disorder and people will tell you that you have an eating disorder if you tell them oh yeah i fasted dry for 48 hours people will tell you oh there's something wrong with you you need help like that's simply not true that's all it's it's they've been brainwashed to believe that but as long as you maintain control, you do not have a disorder because people that have like anorexia and bulimia, they have no control over mm -hmm. how much they eat or how much they, they binge and purge or whatever the case may be. But see, for me, I'm always maintain control of when I eat, when I want to eat, how much I eat. And as long as you can maintain control over those factors, then you're set to go. Mm. Okay. Yeah. That was a lot to handle right there. Oh, yeah. It just went <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's good. It's, it's content. <laughs> this is a free game. Make sure to check his Instagram. And yo, guys, um, make sure you to hit the like button. You guys haven't liked the like button. Get the likes up. Um, so I see in the chat right now, you guys are talking about milk and water and how milk is not healthy. So that's a good thing to transition. I drink uh, fat free milk because of the fat. But um, what do you so milk? So keto diet. Since I know you're big on intermediate fasting, would you ever, if someone it just dis, isn't disciplined enough to do intermediate fasting, would you ever recommend keto? And for those who don't know yeah, what keto so, is, correct. Oh, oh, one second. Sorry. Yeah, um, so, for those so who don't know what keto is, all right, go. go just explain what keto get, is. I don't want you to get roasted in the, I don't want you to get roasted in the comments. It's, it's intermittent fasting, not intermediate fasting. Okay. Oh yeah. Don't roast me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Um, I right, go, um, go, you can go now. Yeah, but you were saying about keto. So I actually am very against, um, keto for the main purpose that when you are in keto, 
when you put your body into ketosis, you are not eating carbs for a long period of time, like days, weeks, months of no carbohydrates. And carbohydrates are a macro nutrient. There are only three macronutrients and your body wants all three of them. That's why they're called macro nutrients. Micronutrients are things like vitamins and minerals for people that don't, that might not know in the, in the comments or those viewers that are watching. Um, but macronutrients are carbs, fats, and proteins. Now you can really mess up your hormones by not getting the right amount of macronutrients. Okay. So if you're cutting out carbs, like indefinitely forever, you can really mess up your hormones. You, you can crash your testosterone levels and raise your estrogen levels. Like you might have heard um, people in the fitness industry talking about estrogenic foods. Um, if you are just doing keto exclusively, you can really mess with your hormones. Now, if you do keto like every now and then, like putting your body into ketosis is not bad per se, because when I'm doing a long fast, like a 48, 72 hour fast, which again, I don't do super often because I don't have to, but if I did, I would. Um, I, my body is in ketosis when I'm in that super long fast. You feel me? But then after the fast, I eat carbs and fats and proteins, okay? <clears throat> okay. That answers a question. All right, is it good? Mm -hmm. fast and start. Have you answered this question already? Let me read it. It's good to transition slow into fasting and start intermittent fasting on liquids before dry fasting. Yeah, I, I talk not. about that um, in my videos. I talk about slowly integrating yourself into fasting. Definitely don't listen to this video and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to jump right into a into a, a two day fast, a, a 36 hour fast or, or a 48 hour fast. It'll be fine. Like, no, you could really get yourself sick. You could get like the hang the hangry effect, I like to call it, or like the hunger pains. Um, definitely slowly integrate yourself into it. Start with intermittent fasting, do like, um, 14 hour fast, 15, 16 hour fast for a week. And once you get used to that, bump it up to 17, then 18, then 19. And if, if 19 is too much, maybe do like 16 hour fast for three days a week and then do 19 hour fast for, uh, two days a week. And then for the last day of the week, just do whatever you want. Um, mm -hmm. you just need to make it so that it works for you. And so that you're not working for it. And that's how you're going to start to enjoy it. And like I said, at the beginning of this video, this is genuinely how your body was meant to operate. So eventually your body will get used to it. Okay. And it will become enjoyable. Mm. Okay. That sounds good. And then, um, do you guys have any tips for, um, how to grow taller? So it's funny, uh, on, man. Yeah. <laughs> there's no really, honestly, there's really no tips for this, but it's actually funny that you, um, that you brought this up. Cause when I was in like real younger, I was trying to figure out how to go talk, go talk. Cause I went to, um, I want to play basketball at the next level. Right. And so <laughs> I used to pretend to, I used to sleep straight like this. I used to wear back <laughs> braces. I used to do stretching exercises, but, um, not to crush your hopes and dream, right? But realistically, like growing taller genetics, I know things that helped me grow taller was playing basketball. I don't even know. I think it might have still been genetics. But I will say, if you have a hunchback, you're definitely not going to get your full potential. So try and keep your posture as straight as possible. And then the cheat code is just wear boots, Tim's, or wear some platform shoes. <laughs> or they, even nowadays, they have the, the things where it raises up your legs. So that's honestly yeah, guys, a cheat code. Please don't do that. Please don't, please don't get those insoles that raise you up because guess what? If you go out on a date with those insoles on and they raise you up two inches and then you get home eventually, like let's say eventually you take this girl home with you uh, after however many, however many dates it takes, eventually you're going to have to take your shoes off and she's going to find out this guy is not actually, you know, as tall as he said he was on his dating profile or whatever. So like, like Prince O was just saying, um, Doing stretches and standing with good posture is the best thing you can do because if you stand with good posture, you'll look taller in pictures. Um, but like for me personally, I'm only like five, eight and a half. And I can tell you right now that like I really don't I, like I never really had problems with with dating. Like I never really was like, oh, man, I can't get the girls that I want to because I'm too short. Like I never really had that problem. Like I said, the it, at the beginning of the video, the, the biggest thing is just having a good physique that you're proud of because that gets your foot in the door and then being able to talk, being able to talk to women. Like if you like, let's say you have a great physique and you introduce yourself to a woman, that's great. But if you get in there and you start talking about the weather, 
she's going to lose interest really quick, you know? <laughs> so you got to, you got to be able to, you got to be able to flirt. You got to be able to talk to girls, um, in ways that make you sound masculine, that make you sound like a high value guy. Um, and then height doesn't really matter. It can matter to get your foot in the door, just like fitness, just like having a good physique can, can matter to get your foot in the door, but that's all it does is getting your foot in the door. After mm. that, it's, it's more about your personality and like you, as yeah. well, which you can improve people, on much easier. Right. Yeah. People always worry about height, 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 height. Honestly, there's always, there's so many, there's more girls than um, guys in this world. So you're going to find a girl that likes you for your height. Like a lot of people make, get become insecure over their heights. But honestly, realistically, one of the guys I know that gets the most girls in the world, he's like 5'4". And the reason he just has mad confidence, he has mad charisma. Like most of the tall guys I know, they get choosing signals, but they don't even get girls like that that much because all they have is their height. They don't have the personality. Right. And, and then so we've been on here for almost an hour. If you guys have any more questions, put them in the chat. We're about to um, end soon. And um, I have I have a question before um, before you guys ask a question. So um, I've seen like a big part of self-development and dating community is no fat, right? And when you're fapping, you're le releasing testosterone. Do you think that affects you in fitness at all? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm not really big into like learning about the no fap stuff, but mm -hmm. I know some guys that are like really big on semen retention and they mm -hmm. say like it, it helps like improve your skin, which fasting does too. And mm -hmm. it helps you um, stay on your purpose, which is also true. Guys, the biggest thing I can say about that is stop watching porn. Um, mm -hmm. If you are watching porn more than once a week, you need to cut those numbers down. Like in The Wolf of Wall Street, when he says you need to cut those numbers up, well, you need to cut those numbers down. Because the more time you spend like watching porn or masturbating or whatever it is that you're doing, like that's time that you could be spending like reading or working on yourself. Like I know a lot of people that are like, oh yeah, I don't have time to go to the gym or yeah, I don't have time to to read or whatever. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like, are you like watching porn, bro? Like, are you are you masturbating? Because like, I'm not talking trash. Like if you're like if you're someone that that masturbates or whatever, and that's just like how you get off. Like whatever, dude. Like do your thing. But if you're someone that's watching porn like three times a week or something like that, and you're and you're saying, oh yeah, I don't have time for my purpose, or oh yeah, I don't have time for the gym, like. You're playing yourself because that's like upwards of like over an hour a week that you're wasting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jerking off the and, lights on a screen. <laughs> and you know how much energy you lose when you do it? Like when I used to do a crazy, man, I'd be done for the rest of the night. I just fall asleep and I waste two or three hours. So like honestly, if you and if you can control that discipline to not do it, it's actually helpful. So right. um they said I'm gonna answer a few dating questions before we hop off. Um yeah, let's do it. So I'm not sure how to talk to girls. I don't know. Instant snap. All right. So the question is, I'm not sure how to talk to girls. I don't know over instant snap. So one thing, Instagram is all about what helps you most is your presence, how you look, right? So the thing is, if you have a good physique, you have shirtless photos, you're more likely to get responses. I can give you a bunch of tricks and stuff, but realistically, the best thing is to have a good looking picture. And if you have a nice physique, you can have good looking pictures. But also I recommend taking high quality photos. Like there's a, we have iPhone 12s now. There's no reason why your photos look pixelated. And what I recommend is just DM the girls. Comment on her stories. Hey, she sees she has a dog photo. Be like, oh my God, he looks like trouble or something like that. Or even if you just want to cold slide in the DMs, um, so all I'll do is send a girl a picture and say, this is a vibe, okay? If she likes you, she's going to answer the way to get a higher response rate is by making your profile look more attractive and by taking these fitness fitness advice, okay? Like, I'm pretty sure if fitness fast, DM a girl, she's going to answer. She's going to look through his picture. She's going to see the app picture. And then she's like, okay, I should respond. Let's see what his personality is about. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if I could just touch on that quick too. Um, I typically never really used Insta and Snapchat to mm -hmm. talk to girls because a lot of girls are on there just for the free attention, like the likes and the comments. Um, and if you're not giving that to them, they, they might not give you a time of day. So I usually focused on, on dating apps when I was single. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I read this question a little differently. He says he doesn't know how to talk to girls that he doesn't know over Insta and Snap. So if you are going out to like the the bar or you're going out to the club or you're going out like doing things that you enjoy. Like, let's just say you enjoy going to the gym or you enjoy rock climbing and you're trying to talk to girls there. The best thing you can do is just introduce yourself. Be like, hi, my name is so-and-so. Um, 
I just noticed you and I just, I just wanted to come over and say hi and see if you were cool. And from there, you can just kind of make small talk until you talk to her for a couple minutes, enough time to get her number. And then from there, you, you can try to set up the date, just kind of say, Hey, I would like to get to know you better. When are you free to go on a date? And you want to be direct. And you also don't want to like pussyfoot around too much either. Like you don't want to wait for too long because then that's going to make it look like exactly what it is. It's going to make it look like to her, like, Oh, this guy had to build up the courage to like come over and talk to me. And that's like a little, um, like beta male ask, you want to look like you're confident and masculine. So the less time you waste, the better in that aspect. Mm, I completely agree. Yeah. I can't disagree. Yeah. If you go up confidently, <laughs> the girls definitely going to um, respect you. Like a lot of guys, they spend most of their time like beating around the bush and that's how they get into the friend zone. Like most of the time girls know why you, why you're there. And if you don't make a move or you don't ask for a number Ask to meet, uh, meet up for a different time. She's gonna think you're a coward and put you in the beta male friend friend zone frame. Okay, right. So I don't have any more. We don't have any more questions in the chat. Um, can you tell them again where to find you? Yes. And if you so, offer any services. Yes. So for sure. So I am on Instagram at underscore fitness fast underscore, and you can see that right here. And then I have the link to my YouTube profile in my instagram bio and that's fitness fast as well um i am going to be dropping a book soon sometime within the next couple months about fitness i'm not really talking about dating too much in there but fitness is the biggest thing right there i might get more into um like dating and relationships eventually but right now i'm really focused on fitness so watch out for the book because i'm giving away all my secrets everything workouts routines um like fasting root regimen regime regimen um and everything in the book as well as like thought process mentality i w i used to be a um a high school health teacher i taught um physical education and health education for six years in public schools and private schools so this is something that i've lived i understand physical mental social and emotional health and as well as spiritual health i do put some christian um values and and things in there too because obviously God does talk about fasting in the Bible. So that's something that I talk about in my book too. So keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, just stay posted, like, comment, subscribe to the um, YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. All right. That sounds good. So thanks guys for tuning in. I see like one more question. Um, yes, it's okay to start conversations on their snap, snap story. That's exactly how you shoot your shot. If you don't know the girl, you're never going to meet her unless you shoot your shot. So it's completely fine to shoot your shot. Facts. And then lastly, all right, guys, make sure to check out um, Fitness Fast Instagram and make sure to subscribe to his YouTube. We're going to have the links um, in the description. And also, guys, make sure to hit that like button and make sure to subscribe. So, yo, guys, we're out.